All right, so how are you guys doing today? Doing good. Perfect. How about you? I'm good. Thank you. All right, so uh, last time, uh, I don't know if you were in the lecture or watching the YouTube channel videos, uh, we talked about the limiting range. So uh, that is because we want to do documentary. So uh, we just discussed this one before. Uh, we just want to find out how many of reactions we go make, how many of products and the chemical reactions. It's, it's all about the numbers. Um, so uh, the one we tried before was the organic compound combustion reaction. So uh, hopefully you can just tell me uh, this was the combustion reaction. Uh, do you guys know by now what's the product chart, right? Perfect carbon dioxide and water. Perfect. Good. And then um, you can also do start with the balancing the chemical equation first. You can try to, to um, do this. Uh, so we know we need to count the numbers for carbons and hydrogen, oxygen on the left and the right. Uh, so we can have uh, equal amount of equal numbers of each. So we can have reactants coming into the product without missing any elements or anything disappear or just appear from nowhere, but just all there from left and right whole uh, time in the record. So if that is the case, um, now we want to talk about if we have an actual mass in grams, if we have actual mass of something, what we can do with the how many grams or how many of those two will be made in the chemical reaction is two. So maybe we can give them 16 grams over here. Okay. And then uh, we'll give uh, maybe 100 grams of oxygen over here. And we're gonna uh, just uh, do, do the chemical reaction with these two. And find out how many grams of these two will be made. This is kind of uh, something you can do with this documentary. So uh, first thing we have to do is to use those two numbers for actual mass for these two reactants right here. And then uh, you just try to find out the molecular weight of these two. So there's one carbon and there's four hydrogen. Okay. Okay. So that makes 16 grams per mole. Okay. So I uh, need to point out something here real quick. The, we use the mole so one mole means uh, this Avogadro number we call one mole is about 6.022 times 20. Okay. So uh, that means if you have the methane about this many, uh, will weigh about 16 grams. That's what it means. Because it has uh, one carbon and four hydrogen. This is why we multiply those number by the numbers of elements. Okay. So uh, once you get the molecular weight, uh, only thing you have to do is actual mass divided by molecular weight. Okay. So molecular weight, I'm going to write it this way, molecular weight. Okay. And then you get a number in moles okay. uh, because this is in grams, this is in gram per mole. But this is a uh, you know, numerator, a denominator. So those top and bottom cancel for grams, mass unit. But this will become numerator. So you, if you do uh, actual uh, mass in grams divided by molecular weight gram per mole, you get a number in moles, uh, which means simply this huge number will tell you how many of this you have um, the methane. So if you do this, uh, simply what? 16 grams over 16 gram per mole. So we'll give you one mole. So that means uh, based on your calculation work, you find that if you have a 16 grams of methane, means you have a one mole of methane. Okay? So now you know how many moles of methane you have right now. Okay? So now we want to find out then, uh, if you look at the, the coefficient number for these two, it tells you how many of each reaction is needed for the, this full reaction. So if you have a one methane, you need to have a two oxygen dioxide chemical molecule here. So meaning, if you have a one mole of methane, 
How many moles this will be needed there? Two. Perfect. So you need to have two moles of oxygen over here. So you know that uh, by just doing uh, comparing these two numbers here in the uh, left side, right this over here. So let's do this one though. So this is 100 grams. Okay. And then this O2 means uh, 32 oxygen, which is 2 uh, times 16. 16 is the atomic mass of the oxygen. So because O2, that will be 32 grams per mole. Okay. All right. So the, if you try to divide this number by 32, that will be about uh, 3 point something, right? 3 point xx small, okay. approximately. Okay. Maybe 3 point. But anyway, so if that is the case, <coughs> what you can do is the you need to have two moles of oxygen, and you have a one for one moles of the methane, but you have more than two. Okay, you need you only need to have two moles of O2 but you have three point something moles of the oxygen available there. Meaning, uh, only two moles of oxygen would be used, and this one minus two, which is a 1.x, right? 1.1 1 .1 mole sort of thing, they will be still remaining, because they cannot do any reaction anymore, because this is already used up. So one mole goes in, interact with what? Two moles of oxygen, and there will be still 1.x moles of the oxygen will be remaining, doing nothing. So only number that will be only reactants that will be fully 100% used is this one. Because you're going to see a little bit of remaining oxygen over here of the reactions. So we call this <coughs> limiting uh, reagent. Or you can say remitting reactants too. Okay? And this is the one you see after chemical reactions, you see it's still remaining oxygen here. So we can call this abundant. Or you can say excessive uh, reactants. You have uh, a lot more than what you need. Okay? So this is remaining reagent, this is abundant one. And then whenever you're looking for the uh, how many grams of these two is made, you only need to use the one in the limiting region because this we, this is the one we know will be 100% uh, used. So now we done with this one. But now we're gonna compare this number to this one and this one. So one methane will interact with the two <coughs> gas uh, oxygen gas molecule to make one carbon dioxide. So meaning they will make also one mole of carbon dioxide will be produced. Because the one methane goes in to make one carbon dioxide. But one methane goes into the reaction, it will make actually not one but two uh, water. So it will be two moles of um, water. Okay. So now you know how many moles of these two will be made from limiting reagent. Not this one, you don't need to use this one anymore. Uh, then one mole, if you have a number of moles of carbon dioxide, if you just multiply the number in moles by its molecular weight, which is 44 gram per mole, because the one carbon is 12, two oxygen is the two times 16, right? So this is 12 plus 32, that makes 44. Uh, so molecular weight of carbon dioxide is the 44. And if you do this one carefully, the mole number cancel, right? Top, bottom. So you have a numbers in grams. So now you know, uh, if you have a 16 grams of methane, 100 grams of the oxygen, this will make about 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, because uh, we know there will be one mole. Uh, if you do the water now, instead of one, you know there will be two. Uh, so two moles of water, and then water is also same. Uh, the hydrogen is one, but there are two, so one times two plus one oxygen will be 16, so it will be 18, right? So 18 gram per mole is the molecular weight of water. So if you just multiply 18 by two, you, you will be know there will be uh, 36 grams of uh, water. Uh, whenever you do have eight, uh, 16 grams, 100 grams, this will be all used up. This is the still remaining. 
and making those two uh, products in those uh, grains. Kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> that's that's great. The, I'm, I'm giving you this one for the first one because uh, this is the easiest one because you don't have to worry about the motor ratios. You one, two, one, two. It's quite easy, right? Uh, but in case you have a, a bit more complicated one, uh, here's another one you can try. Okay. Let's try to do another one. Okay, let's do the, another one. So whenever you do uh, propane, is that? So there'll be three carbons. And 800 over here. Uh, we can try to do those again in here, and we can try to estimate how many carbon dioxide and water will be produced to balance this uh, chemical equation here. So let's try one over here to minimum possible number for your organic compound that gives at least three numbers for carbon dioxide because the even though you put one for propane here, uh, it has already three carbons in one molecule. But in uh, one carbon dioxide molecule has only one carbon, so that will make minimum um, three number on here. Uh, it can't be lower than three because uh, even one here makes three here. And then uh, there will be uh, one <coughs> propane will have uh, eight hydrogen. So the oxygen, I'm sorry, not oxygen. The water will have a uh, two hydrogen and one molecule. So if you just put four there, that makes eight hydrogen as well on the right side. So uh, that's okay now, but let's try to count the number for oxygen now, which we are happy with the carbon and hydrogen now on both sides, but we wanted to balance the oxygen for now. So if it's uh, three carbon dioxide, each molecule has two, so it'll be three times two makes six oxygen on here. And also water has only one oxygen, but four, so it'll be four oxygen over here. So in total, you have uh, 10 oxygen on the right side. So to make that happen on the left side as well, each uh, um, oxygen, <coughs> oxygen the gas molecule will be diatomic molecule, there'll be two. So you can put five, perfect, yes, five. So that makes us ten too. So now we're good, happy. But the little bit of, uh, little bit of challenging problem is that this is more complicated than when you think about the moral ratio wise. So this is the same as one propane goes into the five oxygen molecule, will make three carbon dioxide and four water. Uh, and also it's the same as, if you think that there's one mole, interacting with the five moles, three moles, and four moles. It's just the uh, same as just one, five, three, four. One mole is five mole, three, and four mole. It's the same, because mole is simply just uh, one big number. So if it's the one to two, this is the same as two to four, right? It's just a ratio wise. So stoichiometry is uh, basically uh, the ratio that we're gonna use to predict, uh, relatively speaking, how much, uh, how many numbers of moles of uh, product will be produced from the moles of each reactants there in the reaction. So uh, let's try to do it in this way, okay. So in this case, uh, let's try to give a certain numbers of uh, uh, here. So maybe you can try to give uh, this is the three, or six. So let's let's say we have uh, forty-four grams of propane over here. Okay, forty-four grams of propane here, and then uh, let's try to let's try to give uh, some number here, which will be sixty-four grams over here. Okay, sixty-four grams over here. Okay, so here's the one trick I'm gonna do. Uh, because if you look at the just numbers for its actual mass, uh, you feel like this is the limiting range, right? Because you only have a 44 grams of uh, propane, but here you have a 64 grams of um, oxygen here. So it looks like it looks like this is the limiting here again. Uh, but if you do the calculation to double check, uh, let's do this one over here. Okay? So it seems like just by looking at the mass number, it's a limiting maybe, but we can double check by doing, uh, count the numbers of moles of each, okay? So how many moles of this one, this one we have, that's the most important thing that just numbers of mass. So try to divide actual mass by, uh, this is also 12 times three and one times eight. So this is what, maybe 44 grams per mole, okay? So I kind of did it in, purpose because I want to make a, 
um, is one mole number for propane over here. Uh, then next to this one here, we have uh, O2, which is also 2 times 16, right? So 32 grams per mole, per mole here. So if you do that, there will be two moles of this one. So here's the thing. Uh, you have one mole of propane over here, and now you have two moles of oxygen over here. Uh, but the, the thing is, when you, whenever you have one mole of a propane, you need five moles, not, not two. So you have only two moles, but you need, okay. So the thing, the moles of uh, the propane here, right? So the one trick you can do is this one. To get the uh, number of moles, you need to have simply, uh, this is what you're comparing to. So I'm gonna compare the number of moles to the other one, the other reference over here, which you have five as a coefficient number. And you, when you, the comparing that two, you start from here. So this will, this will be on the top. And then, then one that you gonna comparing, this is on the bottom. So you know there'll be five moles of oxygen that will be needed there, okay? So you need to have five moles of oxygen, but you only have two. So even though in mass wise, this is a this is even higher, but this will be at this time your limiting reaction. Because yeah, go ahead. So it wouldn't even have a reaction if like this was real, the like real experiment. Perfect. So the if it's a real uh, the chemical reactions, this will be the one that all used up hundred percent. But this one will not. This will not, yes. Because the um, if you have uh, two moles, so we, we, when you compare this one to this one, we know we have uh, less than what we need to have, right? Meaning, if you're looking from here, you have more than what you need for this one. Uh, because the, the okay, that's a very good question. So, so we know this will be limiting because we need to have five moles here, but we need two, so this will be all 100% used. So we know this is the limiting, reactance over here. But uh, it doesn't matter if you're comparing this one to this one. So once again, you have uh, two moles, right, of oxygen. And now you're comparing here to there. So now it's not five over one, it's one over five. So if you divide this two by five, it will be 0.4 moles. So obviously, you only need to have 0.4 moles of Propane, if you're comparing oxygen to uh, propane, it doesn't matter which you're it will get the same. Anyway, you only need to point four moles, but you have one mole. So you have more than what you need for oxygen. So this will make still this one as a limiting reagent. This is a abundant reagent. Uh, so either way you go, it doesn't matter. Um, you're just going to get the same answer anyway. Okay? But most importantly, what you need to confirm by doing this one is the which one is your limiting reagent. So I'm giving you this example because that this may give you kind of a wrong um, impression that oh this is more here so this this one gotta be the limiting reagent here no uh, you have to double check with the number in moles not in numbers in grams okay because the those chemical equations are all just simply by how many how many how many how many which is the same as molar ratio because mole is also big number, but just in the same ratio. Okay. Kind of makes sense, right? Okay, perfect. So now at this time, uh, we're gonna stick to this one, not this one, because this is abundant one. This is the limiting one. So if you, <coughs> sorry, if you uh, stick to this one, uh, now we know we have uh, two moles, two moles of. Oxygen will be all used up, and now we will we'll do the same. So, if you have a five oxygen goes in, gas mole goes in, there will be three and four. Okay, so same when you compare this one to and this one to, uh, this is two moles of oxygen goes in two, but you're comparing to this one, which is three. Okay, and let's do another one too. 
and you're computing this one too, which is four. Four. And this is coming from here, so it'll be over five. Okay. So if you do this one, if you do this one, this will be uh, six over five. So uh, you'll be able to know oh, this 1.2 moles of <coughs> 1.2 moles of the carbon dioxide will be produced. Okay, and then you can find the uh, 1.8. I'm sorry, not 1.8. So this is 8.5, 1.6 moles of uh, water. Okay. Uh, just simply doing this because uh, it's a moral ratio. So five goes in, three made. Five goes in, four of water will be made. Uh, so this is I can predict how much moles of this one we make. Okay, and then simply you just need to multiply these numbers in moles by a small molecular weight for carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. That's 18 grams per mole. Okay. Multiply that number by, and that's your uh, answer for how many grams of these two will be made uh, from this. Kind of long way to do it, right? So the, <laughs> that is kind of a uh, um, something you can do. Um, I think you want to do one more, right? Want to do one more? Okay, let's do one more. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do. Okay, so maybe um, I'll I'll give you. I'll give you about five minutes. Let's try to do this one, okay. and and I'll show you the. Uh, okay. So uh, here you just assume you have a eighty, a twenty-eight grams of the uh, this organic compounds, okay. okay, and then let's assume that you have a uh, <coughs> sixty-four grams of oxygen over here. And then just try to predict uh, how many grams of these two will be made. Okay. So I'll give you about five minutes. Uh, let's do this uh, together a um, little bit later. Okay. So the first thing what you need to do is try to balance your uh, coefficient numbers on the left side and the right side. Okay. So try to balance those two uh, numbers, coefficient numbers, and you'll be able to know. Oh, this might be the moral ratio between these two reactants. You'll see. Which one is going to be your limiting reagent? Okay, and once you find the limiting reagent, uh, you can actually start from there to estimate how many moles of these two products will be made. And once you get that moles number by its molecular weight, that's the uh, final answer for uh, mass of those products uh, at the end. Okay. <clears throat> so I know it's a long learn, uh, so you have to take quite a time. Uh, start with the balance, okay? So I'll give you about uh, four more minutes. Okay. Take your time. It's okay. It, it, it is take a long. It's time consuming uh, questions. Uh, and uh, like I said before, this might be the one of the uh, most difficult parts of thinking one. Uh, so uh, it is okay. I'll just spend some quite a time for uh, do the calculation work, which is quite long. Okay. Uh, but uh, eventually, you can finish it in five minutes. That's really great. Okay. Uh, it's a very long calculation. <coughs>
Okay, maybe two more weeks. <coughs> Maybe uh, one more thing. So let's do this together. Uh, let's compare to your answer uh, when we're done. So uh, this one will have a molecular weight, which is a uh, two carbon, which is two times twelve, plus uh, one times four, because you have a four hydrogen over here. Uh, so in total, you make uh, twenty-four plus four. Uh, that also make twenty-eight grams of cobalt. Uh, so. If you try to divide your actual mass by molecular weight, uh, you will see obviously very nice, easy uh, one a number here for both of the um, organic compound here. Uh, this one same, uh, we know now it's a 16 times 2 dietary molecule. So 32 grams per mole. So if you try to um, divide the 64 by 32, uh, that's also quite good integer number 2 number there, which is 2 more over here. Um, so uh, once again, uh, if you see, if you look at this one over here, it doesn't matter if you start from here, here, no matter what, you will get the right uh, limiting weight. So let's start from here. So I'm going to compare this one to here. So you have a one mole of uh, C2H4, uh, but you compare this one to here, so it'll be 3 over 1, okay, times 3 over 1. So you have to have a 3 moles of or two, but the problem is you have only two moles. So meaning you have less than what you need to have. Um, so that makes this uh, limiting uh, weight pretty much the same. So even though we saw it's a much higher than the mass number, still uh, this is going to be our limiting uh, reference over here. So uh, it will be still uh, same anyway uh, on the other side. Okay. So the so then we, not, we only need to stick to this one, the limiting region over here. So this is two moles of oxygen. Uh, now you're going to compare to this one to here and here. So it'll be two over three, two over three, both of them. So expected moles of these two products are just two over three, because this is where we're comparing to. This is where we started from, is two over three. So this is about 4 over 3, uh, which is about 1.33333333, okay? So you're going to have, for those two, you choose the same ratio, right? The one, one, uh, so one moles of carbon dioxide, and three, three, three moles of H2O. So uh, you're going to have about I don't know, what was that the number? Is <laughs> it 50 something? Right? 57. 57. Okay. How about the water? Was it 23? 23. Perfect. Great. So uh, this is the pretty much it. Oh, yeah. On the test, how many decimal points do you want? To oh, have? that's a very good question. Uh, so the uh, whenever you do the those type of uh, the, the more fraction, uh, you don't have to worry about the decimal point or the okay. six fix, but only for uh, those those numbers. Um, so the molar ratio wise, it's only going to be one one that makes only one six fix, which will be, you know. So this is only for our uh, stoichiometry, but uh, actual your numbers of, so if I give you 
That's a good question. Let's do this. Okay. CP was in here. I gave you 28 grains and 62 grains over here, right? And whatever that you do uh, here, in this way, uh, I just give you one mole here, right? But the, uh, technically, uh, it will be 1.0 because you have a two sig fix, two sig fix. Uh, you need to follow if it's a multiplication or division. Uh, you still need to follow the lowest numbers of a, a sig fix, which is two, two. So you can just grab a two. Uh, so I just give it one mole, but technically speaking, it's 1.0 mole. Uh, so uh, you could do this one just uh, here. So whenever you get the, you don't have to do the rounding up rounding off during the work you just whenever you get the final answer you can do the round, rounding up and rounding off so this will be just uh, 57 and 23 if there was a I don't know the point uh, higher than 5 this round up, up and if it's less than uh, 5 it just round off okay? same thing just, that's a very good question I I think um, I'm not going to do that for this type of question because it will be too hard uh, but still this is the way yeah. but uh, uh, I think that's a really good question by the way that's the how you can use the sig fix in the calculator makes sense right okay. so let's do one more okay. let's do one more and that will be pretty much it for today uh, we uh, on your exam I put the there's an organic compound combustion reaction here, uh, but uh, in case we have uh, other type of uh, reaction, so we have uh, M two H two makes ammonia here. Uh, those types of things, maybe we can try to do. Okay. We have uh, something like this one, right? So this is the other type of uh, reactions, a combination uh, reaction over here, and we can also do the same, but you know, it's pretty much. Sorry. So if you have uh, those uh, compounds are made, uh, maybe I'll give you, uh, this is the 28 grams, okay, 28 grams. And this is uh, maybe only six grams, okay. Oh, let's change it to maybe 10 grams, okay, 10 grams. Okay. And then find out, oh, how many grams of the ammonia will be there? Okay. This is uh, sort of a thing. Uh, we, it's pretty much the same. So. If you look at the, the periodic table will be given, but if you look at the numbers on the nitrogen, you see the what it says on the nitrogen, right? It's yeah. over 14, right? So 14, so, but there is the, the nitrogen is diatomic uh, molecule, so it'll be uh, two nitrogen, so it'll be 14 times two, it's 28 gram per mole. So you have a nitrogen gas molecule has a 28 grams per, uh, grams per mole as it's a molecular weight. So also this would be a very uh, good number in moles, uh, one mole. Uh, and the, we have uh, also another diatomic molecule, hydrogen, one times two, because each gas molecule has two. So if you divide by, if you divide 10 grams per grams by two grams per mole, uh, there'll be about five point uh, zero moles of uh, H2. So uh, let's try to compare with the, uh, either way is fine. I'll start with this one. Uh, so if you have a one mole of a nitrogen gas molecule, you need to have uh, three moles of hydrogen uh, gas molecule required, but you have five, okay? Meaning uh, that makes this one our limiting reactants, reagent, or, uh, or this is a bundle one, okay? So, now we know which one is our limiting reason, so we'll stick to one, just one. So, if so that is to one, now you're comparing this one to two, right? So it'll be one mole of nitrogen gas molecule you need to have two over one, two moles of uh, ammonia will be produced. Because it's a more ratio, it's one to two, so it's uh, that by two over one. Okay? So uh, that make these two moles of ammonia will be produced, and I'm sorry, this one, and you just try to multiply by its molecular weight, which is uh, 14 
uh, plus uh, 1 times 3, right? Which is a 17 gram per mole. Okay. That makes, uh, okay, let's try to do it. So try to, if you do this one, there'll be two times uh, 17, it will be 34 grams uh, of ammonium when we treat this, theoretically speaking. Okay. It's pretty much the same, right? But just different type of reactions. Uh, but it, uh, you can use the stock geometry for almost everything, uh, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna put the limiting agent one with the organic combustion, which we did the most of the uh, practice. Okay, kind of makes sense, right? Good, perfect. All right, so the, I'll, I'll just stop here uh, today. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about the other uh, topic. Uh, so from 